Hey everybody, this is your boy Mohambi and you are watching Entertainment Focus. Stay tuned. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. I'm really good actually. A little bit tired because I had a late session in the studio at the Metropolis studio in London last night. Uh, and also I've done like three days of basically uh, regional promo. So I've been to, I've seen a lot of cities in the UK which I had never seen before. So that was exciting. And have you enjoyed your time here so far? Yeah, yeah, of course. I'm always, you know, London is such a nice metropolitan, like melting pot city. I love to be in London, so. Well, we've got decent weather for once. Oh, so see. You must have brought it with you. I try, I try every time. I make some calls and try to arrange weather, you know, wherever I go. <laughs> so let's talk about the single. You've got the new single out, it's your debut UK single, Miss yeah. Me, featuring Nelly. Tell us a bit about that track. Well, Miss Me is actually one of the first tracks I wrote for my album. And um, yeah, we and it came to be the first single, so hopefully that and um, that, that's great. And I really like the song. It's a mid-tempo pop R and B, but still with this African vibe in it that I always trying to bring forward in my songs. Because I obviously I'm an Afro Viking, you know. I come from both. I come from two different cultures, so I try to use those two cultures in my music and. Uh, so Miss Me, and it's a featuring, so when the song was done and recorded, we were feeling, hmm, we maybe need somebody on this track that could actually uh, bring something more to the table, give it more flavor. Uh, so who wouldn't be better than Nelly himself um, put some urban Af American uh, flavor into the song. And he did really great. So it's actually Miss Me, it's a featuring with Nelly. It's gonna be out here like next week, I think. And I'm really excited. Um, and tell us a bit about the concept of the video. How did that come about? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, you know, I try to be involved as much as possible in everything when it comes to the creative part because I have too much in my head to not speak out. <laughs> I have to tell everybody about it, and if they like it, well, we use it. You know. Uh, so um, the concept of the video is basically me come into this uh, odd, random private club, you know, kind of low-key club where uh, you have, um, yeah, I'm, I meet a girl in the club, you know, this guy meets a girl and they have a really nice time, they dance a lot and you can feel the chemistry, you know, and, but the thing, the message in the video is that you don't always have to, and it, I mean, it's not, not everybody gets to every time leave with somebody from the club, you know, you can actually, <laughs> Go out one night, have a nice time, meet somebody in the club, chat, flirt a little bit, dance, and that's it. So I get to be the guy who doesn't get the girl in the end. Um, so in the rest of Europe, you'd already had um, a hit with Bumpy Ride. Um, right. Why did you decide that that wouldn't be the first UK single and that you would go with Miss Me? Was that something that you personally decided? Or? Well, I think it's a unanimous decision because we work as a team with the, my label. I try to be... Uh, involved and active as much as possible and I think that the fact that I have you know I write my own songs so and I write every day so songs will not be the thing we're gonna be short of you know if you know what I mean like me and Red One we just are being really creative all the time uh, so which is becomes actually kind of a luxury problem where you have a lot of great songs but what we want to do is adapt to the markets as well because we do have different songs, we don't need to just monopolize and give one song to everybody. We, they can actually pick and choose, and Miss Me was the perfect choice for the UK market right now. Bumpy Ride would definitely follow up, you know, it's part of the album. So, um, yeah, Miss Me is a uh, nice fall song, you know, back to school kind of uh, feeling, and yeah, I think it's perfect for, for the because the two songs, they are quite different. It's something yeah. you can expect from your album, quite a lot of variety and different sounds. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, the, the diff, diff, same sound, but in different shapes, uh, where we want to keep this this uh, urban pop feeling, but always, you will always find, maybe in form of a dance move, or a melody, or lyrics, some African roots, you know, because I can't help it, it's part of myself. You know? Even when I write for other artists' songs, you know, I can always find this identity of myself, which is, you know, Afro-European. 
and you do the, you were saying you do the songwriting, obviously you do the, the singing as well, and in the videos you're doing the dancing, is there anything you can't do? Oh, there's a lot of stuff I can't do. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff I can't do. I, what I try to do, is focus on, is the things that I'm best at, you know, because that's what makes me stand from everybody else, and uh, hopefully uh, some uniqueness in it. But, uh, of course, you know, nobody's perfect. So you're the first signing to Red One's label. Mm -hmm. um, how did that come about? How did you meet him? Uh, hmm. So to give you a little bit of history, I had a band with my brother for 12 years before I met Red One, and we were really active and you know had some success, mostly in Africa and in African countries. And um, at one point in my career, I was kind of tired of touring for six months, coming back to Stockholm, spent all the money, party, <laughs> working. So I was like, okay, I want to take my career to the next level. So me and a couple of friends as a songwriting team, because we had a couple of projects in, in LA, uh, we decided to move actually, you know, like leave everything in Sweden. I quit my job at Ericsson, just leave and fly over to LA and see whatever life can bring us. And I actually, by coincidence, move in into the same building as where the Red One team lives, like the rest of the guys working for Red One, songwriters, producers. And this is a bunch of young guys, crazy, crazy guys, act, like making a lot of noise by the pool every morning, and they are screaming in Swedish. So when I realized that, wow, we have a couple of Swedes in the, in the building, who are these guys? So I walked down, we started chatting, we basically, that was a start of a really strong friendship and brotherhood. And one day they told me, Mo, we want you to meet Red One. He's in town right now. This is the perfect opportunity because we love what you do. Obviously, after you know, a couple of weeks, we exchanged music because they are amazing songwriters and producers. So, uh, we love what you do. We have to meet Red. I was like, okay, cool, man. You know, panic, like, what? Where? <laughs> I bring my CD. So I, get to, I go to this meeting as a songwriter thinking that, you know, because that's, that's what I'm here for. I wasn't thinking Mohammed the artist. Uh, but obviously Red saw through that and they were like, whoa, Mohammed, I've heard about you so many years. Like We have a friend in common that keeps talking every year about you. You and your brother and you guys are making a lot of stuff. And I, he loves hard workers, you know? And I definitely consider myself as a hard worker because he is one as well. And. Um, so uh, yeah, it was actually the common point we had, which is Sweden, that brought us together and that made him open up for me. And then he was like, "Okay, you're a good songwriter, amazing. I want to have you on my team." But Mo, you are a superstar. Come on, that you've been a superstar since a kid. Like, play me some stuff of your own. So I did. I had an extra CD. I played for him, and he was like, "Whoa, I get this. You know, this African." feeling the African pop, like European pop and the blending of the two worlds. So he told me like, I'm gonna make you a superstar. So finally I had found somebody that actually would, didn't want to change me as an artist, you know, because that's what you're always afraid of. Instead develop me and just let me bloom and, you know, let me be myself, let me do me. And I love that. And have you felt any pressure, because obviously with working with Red One, he's probably the biggest hit maker and biggest producer in the world at the moment. Do you feel the pressure to follow you know, the massive hits that he's had, or is, is that pressure not really on you? I'm not really thinking like that. You know, I work best under pressure, I've always had, and it's something that, a quality that you need to have as an artist. And uh, the fact that Red One is one of the most humble and amazing persons I know, and he's really confident, he's like pep talking me every day he calls me, you know, mess like, Mo, what's going on? Tell me what you're doing, bro, how is it going? Who, how are they treating you? So I feel really comfortable being like the ambassador for the Red One family and the 2101 record, you know? So definitely. So when can we see you I'm performing? Just excited. <laughs> when can we see you performing live in the UK? Uh, very, very soon. I did have a sneaky peeky like a guest performance at the O2 Arena when Eddie Caddy, a good friend of mine, a comedian, had his first big show. Uh, but I, I hope to come back next month, actually, to do some performances, definitely. And what can we expect from a typical show from you? Yeah, yeah, that's a good question, because, like I said, I've been performing. Basically, I've been 
touring for 12 years, you know, stage after stage and everywhere, countries, continents, throughout the whole world. So this is the best part for me personally, this is the best part with this job, to stand on stage and to do live performances. So you can expect a party, definitely, because I try to bring up movement, I try to satisfy my fans also uh, uh, visually and not only not releasing good songs. I want them to actually, whoa, this was an event, this was an experience. And I try, I'm trying to bring show business, uh, entertainment back to show business. Okay, so last question for you. What else can we expect from you in 2010? 2010, this, it's this year, right? This year. <laughs> 2010, well, uh, you can expect me still smiling, still trying to take day by day and um, do a lot of collaborations with uh, young artists because I want to work with young people that are also like upcomers or that are new to the business. People trying to bring a flavor to, the, to this business, you know, like I'm trying to do. Uh, so you can expect me, what you can expect from me is just me being myself and me trying to satisfy you guys.